Hi. Today we're going to explore uh, Oracle VM uh, CLI command basics. Uh, now this video is going to be a little long, uh, but I thought it would be a great idea if we explored some of the basic uh, CLI commands and what they do. This is all covered in the CLI user's guide, uh, but I thought perhaps seeing, uh, m uh, seeing the commands from a slightly different perspective might be uh, helpful to some. By the way, I just wanted to say thanks for sticking with me this far despite my poor diction and incoherent mumblings, um, but I hope the videos have been helpful in some way. Anyway, I'm going to attempt to give some perspective on how the various CLI commands are uh, grouped to operate on objects. Um, and the uh, CLI user guide uh, categorizes the commands, but it still may be a little confusing to some uh, when they see that we have both a remove as well as a de uh, delete command, um, for example. What's the difference? Also, it's not readily apparent when you first uh, start working with a CLI uh, how to perform common tasks like starting, stopping, or migrating Oracle VM guest, along with quite a few other uh, things you might like to know how to do. Uh, to begin, let's open up a uh, SSH session. Um, and now I'm going to, or a terminal, I'm going to SSH as admin uh, at, and I'm on the manager already, so again, in this case, I'm going to go local host. Uh, on port 10,000, 10,000, and now we're on. Um, so uh, to begin with, we'll go through the query commands, which I've used a lot. There's a uh, list and uh, show. List server shows you the objects. Uh, show uh, server, of course. And I'll just copy that and paste it. it. Shows you the attributes associated with the server. Um, so those are the query commands. Um, now, a little earlier I had a uh, video that I uh, had about the uh, help commands uh, for the CLI. And of course we covered the question mark, uh, which shows you all the common commands. Um, but if you notice here, you don't see uh, start or stop or update, uh, do a yum update or anything like that. And those are in custom commands. Um, so um, to see those commands, here's another help command, show all tab, show all custom commands. Now these are all those custom commands that you can do things with, um, you know, like um, add a, a vNIC, um, clone a virtual disk or VM. Uh, let's see what else is interesting here. Uh, discover a server, um, import a template, um, refresh storage layer. Um, this allows you to discover newly presented disks uh, to uh, that have been presented to a server without having to reboot the server, so that's a, a really nice command to use. Uh, and of course, all these things can be done in the UI. Uh, you know, and of course, the classic uh, I want to start or stop a server uh, or a VM guest. Anyway, those are the custom commands. Um, now, here's another help command uh, show uh, custom commands. Now, what this will do is of that list that we see above there. Um, let's say I wanted to see which of those commands pertains to a VM. I would type show custom commands VM. Or perhaps a server. I would go uh, show custom commands server tab. And so we can see on a server, I can refresh a server, I can restart a server, start, stop, kill, refresh storage layer, initiate a yum upgrade, and then get events for a server. Um, and then finally, um, since we talk about objects a lot, a lot, you might want to know what is considered an object. So you would use this help command called show object types. And these are all objects uh, in the, the model. All right, so uh, we had query commands, we did help commands. Ah, yes, um, so now we have commands that operate on objects, and those are create and delete. So we can create an object, or we can delete an object. Um, and let's go ahead and demo one of these things. So what are things that I can create? What kind of objects can I create? Well, I can create a uh, bond port, a uh, file server, a network, a uh, server pool, um, you know, everything else that you see there. Now let's start with bond port. So let's create a bond port because this might be something you like, uh, you would, a common task you might do. Um, so I just hit the tab key there and now what kind of arguments do I need to create a bond, part, bond port? Let's go ahead and hit the question mark. 
and this has all the things that I need to create a bond port. Uh, all the required are with a have a star in front of the uh, the name, and uh, so let's go ahead and proceed. Um, I need an address type. An address type is uh, you know IP address none, DHCP or static. I'm going to use static tab, um, and of course I need uh, two or more Ethernet ports. So let's go one, um, and let's say it's uh, ETH one. And Ethernet port two uh, equals uh, ETH three. Of course, I'm making all this up right now because these are already assigned, and so this command is really going to fail. Um, but uh, I intend for it to fail. Um, so let's see what else we need. Oh, we need a mode. Um, so our modes are um, uh, active backup, dynamic, and adaptive. So we're going to use adaptive uh, load balancing. Uh, what else do I need here? Oh, MTU. We'll use the common 1500 uh, a name, and uh, I'm just going to make one up. Bond you would might use bond one, bond two. I'll use bond 23. Um, and what else do we need? Okay, so we're going to create a bond with those ports, that Ethernet address. Oh, and we're going to create it on a server tab. Now, what's the name of the server? We're going to create it on my server one, which doesn't really exist here. So um, like I said, this command is going to fail, um, but you get the idea. If I wanted to create an object, this is how you would go about doing it. All right, and of course, conversely, you want to delete an object. You would just say delete bond port uh, name equals and the name of the bond port, and then it would delete it. All right, so that's operate on objects. Um, now let's talk about operating on object relationships, uh, the relationship between one object and another object. Um, those are the add and remove. So uh, these are relationship uh, kind of commands. Add. Now, what can we add? Uh, we can add a bond port, file system, physical disk, server, so on and so forth. So let's add a relationship between a server and a SAN server, uh, our uh, fiber channel, uh, our generic fiber channel storage array uh, object, because they need to have an admin server. Um, so you can discover new disks without having to reboot your server. Um, anyway, so we'll go add, and we're going to take a server and add it to, uh, and what's the name of the server? My server. Oh, you know what? Before I start that, let me just show you real quick here. Uh, let's um, list our server. Let's list our um, SAN array, SAN server. Um, and then also let's show what the SAN server looks right uh, right now, what, what it looks like right now. So SAN server tab uh, name uh, equals, and I'm going to put a single quote there because anytime you have uh, an ID or uh, a name, uh, instance uh, name um, that has spaces in it or a string, any string with a spaces in it, you have to um, enclose them with these uh, single quotes. Uh, and let's see that. Now, we can see that of all the attributes for this unmanaged fiber channel storage array, there are no admin servers here. And the admin server is not there by default. Uh, and um, normally people don't consider putting it on there because when you boot up a server and the fiber channel, channel disks are presented to it, they just show up. Um, so you think it's all working fine. But you really need to add uh, every server in a server pool as an admin server. So if you, down the road, you add a disk, present it to these servers, um, you don't have to reboot the servers again to um, have it discover the new, new disks uh, if they have admin servers assigned. So that's what we're going to do right now is go ahead and uh, add, um, let's see, a server. I'm going to add a server, and the name of the server is my server 18. Um, and I'm going to add it to SAN server, and the name of the SAN server, same one I had above, and let's just uh, copy that. Single quote, single quote. Um, so let's see, we have add server name to SAN server, that should do it. All right, and now we've added it. Let's go ahead and do our show SAN server command again, and you can see a new line here which is this one right here, admin server one. 
Now you should add every admin or every server in a server pool as an admin server to an unmanaged fiber channel storage array if you're using fiber channel. Um, now conversely you might want to remove this. You shouldn't um, unless you have a good reason to but once you've added them you probably want to leave them there. So to remove this uh, relationship uh, between these objects I'm going to remove a server uh, and the name is uh, my server 18 and I'm going to remove it from tab um, a SAN server tab and the name of the SAN server is this guy right there and that should do it and now we have success and if we show our SAN server it's no longer an admin server for that all right um, so that's uh, how we operate on uh, object relationships. We add a relationship between one object and another or we remove it. Okay, and then the final command that I'm going to show you, and there's more commands, but these are the ones that you're going to use the most, um, is edit. I want to be able to operate uh, on object attributes. So I, everything else to this point has been on an object. Now this goes down into the object and uh, operates on the attributes associated with an, uh, an object. Um, so this is the edit command and what kind of things can we edit of course here's our list with the question mark uh, in this case uh, let's change the name of the server um, so we're going to edit server uh, name equals um, my server 18 and the new name is going to be Greg there we go now we'll list server and now it's changed and now let's go ahead and change it back. Edit uh, server name equals uh, Greg, and the new name is my server. Oops, server 18. And now we're changed back. Now notice how fast these commands actually execute. Um, so um, you know, not only can you automate a lot of tedious things, but it's much faster when you automate things um, in the UI. Uh, or instead of using the UI, you automate it through scripting. Um, but I guess that's why you're watching these videos. You already know that. Okay, um, let's do one more thing just to give you an idea of, of what edit can do, the power of edit. Um, so we're going to edit um, a server again, and uh, the name, of course. I'm going to make this one up because I don't really want to put this in maintenance mode, but let's put a server in maintenance mode, my server 1, which doesn't exist, uh, as I said before. We're going to put it in maintenance mode with a tab, um, and we're going to say yes. Now this is going to fail, but that's expected. All right, uh, and then it would normally, if you had put a real name in there, it would be in maintenance mode now. And then, of course, the next thing you want to do is, um, you know, uh, uh, do a yum update on it. So you would do that initiate uh, yum, whoops, initiate yum upgrade. And then of course you'd put the server and the name, you know, upgrade, server, name, so on and so forth. Um, anyway, um, that gives you kind of a brief um, uh, overview of the commands and how I picture them as they're grouped together. The, the user guide doesn't do this uh, in this way, um, but I thought this was a little easier to understand. Uh, but the uh, user guide has a lot of really valuable information in it, and it shows, uh, gives you illustrations on how to do a lot of these type of commands. Anyway, that should do it, and I really appreciate your time once again. Thanks.